I'm going to compare these three cartridges on five different targets to find out which one is the superior rimfire cartridge on this episode of Ultimate Barrier Testing. But first things first, how fast are these bullets going? I'll tell you what, I am not impressed by any of those standard deviations, but let's ask Terry his opinion. Point. Blank. Ooh. Terry, with all these ballistic tests under your belt, well, metaphorically, which cartridge do you think is going to win? 22 Magnum! For once, I actually agree with you. Let me know which one you think is going to win, though, and let's get this testing started off. Here at Banana Ballistics, we treat all cartridges the same, which is why I'll be sticking with a 6x6 piece of pressure-treated lumber, even though these are some of the smallest cartridges you can currently get, but you already know the drill. Two shots from each cartridge, and I think we're good to go. I really don't think that any of these cartridges are going to go through, but at the same time, I'm going to be pretty disappointed if at least one of them doesn't go through, if that makes any sense. To the left, the 22LR, let's see if it was good, nope, definitely not. How about that 17 though? I'm not sure, but I think I may have seen a little something something through the scope. The holes are just so tiny it's hard to tell, but let's check out the back. Oh, ho ho! Let's see what ha- holy shit. Straight through the three quarter inch piece of plywood. I mean, come on guys, the 10 millimeter couldn't even go through this whole entire block. Freaking 17 HMR is beating some rifle rounds. Can you believe that? I mean, I can't, but let's see what the 22 Magnum does. Kept the same line going. Well, I never said it was a straight line, but let's check out the back. Surely the 22... Oh my gosh. You've got to be kidding me. The 17 HMR punched right through the 22 Magnum. There's nothing in sight. Freaking nothing on the three quarter inch piece of plywood. If one was going to go through, I thought for sure that it was going to be the 22 Magnum. That 17 is something else. I thought the outcome would be a little different, but there's no denying those results. <laughs> All right, you need to move out of the way, trash. Actually, you know what? There really isn't that much damage to this one. Let's go ahead and keep it and then do the old flip. Okay, let me straighten that up a bit. And I think we're good to go. For this round, we have a bit of a doozy. Terry's sand trap. That's right, six inches of solid sand. Based on previous testing, I, it would be a miracle if either of these cartridges, if any of these cartridges went through, but we'll check it out. And yes, that is a new box of sand to replace the unspeakable that happened last time. And you want to know something else unspeakable? I have had my credit card info stolen at least five times within four years in the past. I'm not even joking, and it was freaking frustrating. But the crazy thing is that I have an idea of how they did it, and apparently it's perfectly legal. Data brokers. Data brokers sell your information to whoever wants it, and getting this information is one of the first steps a scammer takes towards accessing all of your accounts. And when your info is exposed, the best case scenario is just a bunch of extra spam, but if something like this can happen to me, it could literally happen to anyone. Luckily, thanks to this video's sponsor, Aura, I really don't have to worry about this anymore. They automatically opt me out of these data broker websites, which secures my information. I also get a VPN, antivirus, credit monitoring, and many other services is all inside of one app for an affordable price. In fact, if you go to Aura.com slash Banana Ballistics, you'll get a 14-day free trial just for signing up, and you'll also be helping the channel to continue doing more tests like these. So big thanks to Aura for sponsoring this video, and now, back to the testing. Decent shot placement, now let's turn it around, even though I'm pretty sure I already know the results. Yep, absolutely nothing. You think the 17 will shock us again? I'm not too sure, but I also said that about the last one, so there's only one way to find out. Is it just me or is that 17 a little louder than most? 
Nice. About the same shot placement as the 22. I really couldn't see that through the scope, but let's turn it around and see. Yeah, it definitely didn't shock us this time. Yep, both of those were from before, so let's move on to the 22 Magnum, huh? Rimfire taps. say it's definitely in the mix. Now let's turn it around and see absolutely nothing on the back with this one either. About what we expected, or about what I expected anyway. So round number two is a tie as far as I could tell. So let's do a little cleaning up. Actually, uh, these are going to be pretty useful. And then we'll do the flip. And I think we are good to go. Hold that thought. We got to add the wings, which are very freaking rusty at this point. I'm just telling you right now, these cartridges will not go through much concrete at all. But let's see if they could do anything. Nothing. Terry, I don't want to hear another word out of your mouth. Let's see if they could do anything to these one and a half inch thick pavers made of solid concrete. I think we are good to go. And that's a perfect example of why you should never trust your life to rimfire cartridges. That mini mag, which is super reliable, didn't go off the first time. I mean, it went off the second time, but still. And we got a whole bunch of nothing. Terry, I said not another word. So uh, let's see what that 17 HMR can do, huh? Would that hawk shut up? Thank you. I think we are good to go. Don't have anything to say about those results, huh, Terry? Check that out. That is way better than I was thinking. Or, well, maybe it's not. Maybe it just cracked the block. Actually, I think probably didn't actually go that much deeper than the 22. Never mind, it went a lot deeper. But anyway, let's uh, get that 22 Magnum all set up. That was easy. Out of the three, that one definitely appeared to do the most damage, but let's check out the, ooh, let's check out the result. Ooh, I actually don't know if that's the deepest. Let's compare it to the uh, 17 HMR here. Yeah, the, uh, well, let me turn it to where you could see it. The uh, 17 HMR, I believe, went a little bit deep. I don't know, it might be a tie. Let me go back to the bench and do that real quick. Well, after I do all the rest of the test. They tied. Well, uni sled, it's time to get out of here. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. Oh, the wings actually stayed in this time. And let's grab steel sled 4.2. This thing is an absolute beast. I think we're good, Terry. You are not in a splash zone. I don't want to hear anything about it. The nerve of some ballistic torsos, huh? And now the moment you've all been waiting for. Wait, what? You like the concrete better? Well. I didn't ask. We're moving on to mild steel, and this plate right here does not come up too often. This is an eighth inch of mild steel, and the funny thing is, I don't even know if they could go through this, but let's check it out. Man, I'm really gonna have to turn this one down. All right, that should be tight enough. Obviously it didn't go through, but let's see. Yeah, I mean, there's a little bit of a dent, but we're gonna need a lot more to get through this. And I'm thinking that the 17 HMR might do the trick, but we'll see. Guys, if you wouldn't mind, I'd really appreciate if you hit the like button and subscribed. Yep, that is a nice clean hole. One of the smallest I've ever seen, and that is definitely not passing the pinky test, but let's see what the 22 Magnum can do. And no dice, although it went a lot deeper than the 22. And you can see that it is a jacketed bullet instead of the uh, copper washed one like the 22, but still no dice. So I was waiting to break these bullets out to the next round, but I think I'm going to break them out now to see if they compete with the 17 HMR. These are some super high velocity loads for each of the 22 cartridges. And based on these velocities, I think they have a better chance of getting through the steel, but we'll just have to see. <laughs> It definitely hit a little higher than I was aiming, but let's check out, ooh. Guys, I really can't tell a difference between the dents on these two. That is insane. I mean, I guess it was because it was a hollow point. I don't know. Realistically, I wasn't thinking that that one was going to go through, but I am legitimately thinking that the 22 Magnum will, so let's see. <laughs> 
what did I tell you? Look at that clean hole right there. Definitely not as clean as the 17 HMR, but I really don't care. It went straight through. We are moving on up and we need to get you out of the way, sir or ma'am. And then there were two and we are moving straight on up to 3 16 of an inch of mild steel. I really don't think they have any chance of getting through this one, but you never know. Always oh, got to ruin the paint job, huh? All right, I think we are looking good. I'm not a betting man, but I'm betting they're not going through. And it looks like so far I am correct. The 17 HMR got stopped cold. It left a uh, pretty good gouge though. I don't know if it's looking too good for the 22 Magnum though. I'll tell you what, my shoulder is enjoying these rimfire cartridges for a change. Yeah, not quite on that one either. I think you know what that means, huh? Actually, you know what I just remembered is that I have another 17 HMR cartridge that's faster than the other one, but it's a hollow point. Still, let's uh, shoot it at the steel real quick. Yeah, still nothing. So now we can head back to the bench. It's time to wait a second. There's nothing to grind. Well then, I guess it's time to measure. It's just not as fun to say. All right, so the deepest point on the 17 HMR was 89 thousandths. The absolute deepest point on the 22 Magnum was only 83 thousandths, so the 17 HMR definitely won. But also, the difference is less than the thickness of two pieces of paper stacked on top of each other, so I think I'm gonna call this one a draw. <laughs> Oh, and in case you're curious, the 17 HMR hollow point only penetrated 50 thousandths. Pretty terrible there. Well, Uni Sled, it looks like you're back in the game. And finally, we have... T Wait, Terry, get out of the way. We have ballistic gel. This one should be pretty interesting because I'm going to fire an FMJ and a hollow point for each of the cartridges. So let's get to it. Okay, here are our two shots. The top one should be the round nose and then the bottom one should be the stinger. Let's check out the wound path though. It's kind of hard to see with this camera. Ooh, that is some serious damage. And there's the bullet right in there. That is a uh, pretty good penetration. I mean, it's only about maybe two and a half inches from the end. Let's see if we can find the other bullet though. Ooh, is that something in there? Oh, it looks like the stinger. Man, look at the, that wound path is nothing compared to the uh, round. Look, that, I guess it tumbled or something in there. That is a massive wound channel. The stinger though, barely went halfway through the block it looks like. I'm gonna need to review the footage on that one because those are some crazy results, but we're moving on to the 17. I saw a puff of smoke come out of the block on that one. Let's see what happened. So here are two shots, pretty small, but the top one is the FMJ again, and then the bottom one is the hollow point. Now let's check out our wound channel though, and see, oh, oh my gosh, these FMJs are freaking nuts with the wound channels that they're producing. And it looks like the uh, bullet actually came out the side of the block here. It deviated a little from a straight line because it was tumbling, obviously. And it went out about the uh, 15, maybe a little bit longer than that inch mark. The other one though, barely, I mean it didn't barely go into the block, but it went about seven inches if I had to guess, and it did a pretty decent number on the block as well. It's gonna be a little easier to see later. One more time. All right, two shots again. Top one is the FMJ, bottom one is the hollow point. Let's check out what the wound channels looked like. Okay, FMJ wound channel, and it penetrated straight in and straight out, just like me. And then the hollow point, uh, you could see that it started breaking up back here somewhere, but it still keeps go. Oh, looks like it landed right there. That is much better performance than any of the other hollow points, at least penetration wise it looks like the permanent wound cavity up here is pretty decent as well but i think we need to head back to the bench and do a little bit more investigation it's time to torch All 
Alright, so the leading edge on the 22LR Mini Mag was about 13 and 7 8 inches, and it actually had the widest wound channel, believe it or not, but boy did it take a while to get there. And keep in mind it was only in one direction. The Stinger penetrated about 8 and 3 quarter inches, and it actually had a pretty decent wound channel, just not much penetration. Kind of like me. The 17HMR FMJ came out the side of the block like we already knew, but... Boy, did it do some freaking damage. I mean, if you would have told me that the bullet would have tumbled, I would have never said that it would have went that far into the block, but it did quite a number. I am super impressed with that one. The hollow point, on the other hand, only went about 6 and 3 8 inches, which is terrible penetration, but it had some serious fragmentation at the beginning of that wound channel. The 22 Magnum FMJ or TMJ, whatever it is, it penetrated the whole way through the block. Like, it just zipped through that whole freaking block, which is pretty cool, but it really didn't do that much damage. The hollow point on the other hand was the best performance of the day coming in at 12 and a half inches of penetration which is super impressive but it also left a pretty decent wound cavity the whole way through so based on these results I'm splitting it between the 17 HMR having the best FMJ performance and the 22 Magnum having the best hollow point performance. That 17 HMR is something else, and it's definitely the winner of this testing, but if it weren't for that freaking piece of pressure-treated lumber, the 22 Magnum really wasn't that far behind. And obviously, the 22 LR wasn't really going to compete on most of the targets anyway, but it's also a fraction of the cost.